Alright everybody, welcome to the Ladies Talk with Lunatic Mom and Froggy. We're going to try and make this a weekly podcast thing when she's not busy. Yeah, that we would be nice. We all know Mom lives a very busy life. She's got so many kids. Got so many things to do every day. I know, I'm so glad you took the time out for little old me. No, I always do. It's just I need to be reminded because I forget things. And and on top of it, I'm like, the other day, I had to go get myself a coffee. And I went to the store three times and still didn't get the coffee. How do you forget the coffee, Bob? Well, because everything else is more important because everybody, hey, mom, can you get this? Hey, mom, can you get that? Hey, this and that. And I'm like, okay. Then I get home, I'm like, I went there for something else. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's just crazy. But I don't care. I'm not doing nothing. Like I said, I don't have a job, so I don't. You do just... have a job. <clears throat> well, in a well, way. Think about this one. Bates get paid how much an hour? Yeah. What, 20 <clears throat> bucks an hour to be a maid? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, about. A chef gets paid about what 50 an hour or or more it depends on the restaurant <laughs> right so we're just gonna run fast to make 50 bucks mm. for a chef yeah um laundry service they get oh, paid about God. 30 bucks an hour um yeah. chauffeur they get paid uh, starting at a hundred dollars an hour so yeah. <laughs> i mean you got four jobs in one baby <laughs> and then the counselor then the banker the, the therapist <laughs> yeah i guess uh, you have to look at it that way but i See, i really you, you look at it as i don't have a job i look at yeah. it as you have one of the most important jobs in the whole entire world and that's being a mother well, yeah, you can look at it that way because it is important to me that, you know, I can do stuff for the kids. And even though they're not little, <clears throat> but I still want it to be part of it, like if they need something. so. Right. And, th and that's the thing. A lot of people don't take into consideration all these stay-at-home moms, what they actually do. Now, there are stay-at-home moms that don't do nothing. They literally just... Sorry, my dogs are playing right next to me. Oh, it's okay. Chom Chom's trying to get Coco up and active more. Oh, okay. Yeah, at least they're trying to help each other. <laughs> right. <clears throat> but, no, like, being a stay-at-home mom is a hard job. I mean, there are ladies out there that don't do nothing, and they just let... They just... Well, I took care of the kids all day. You get to take care of them. You get to clean the house. Da, 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 da. Right. Those are the moms that really take advantage of it. Yeah, I guess, you know, sometimes it's just like you have to look at it, like how people view their participation in a family, like, you know. Right. Yes, I actually it was uh, very funny that you were saying that because the other day I actually came across on a Facebook and it was like um like somebody posted that a man went to a psychologist and he was asking for help. So how can the psychologist helps him to deal with everything, with the stress, how hard he works and everything else? But his wife doesn't work. She just stays home. She doesn't work. And the psychiatrist, like, asked him, like, okay, so your wife doesn't work? He's like, no, she stays home. She takes care of the house. She cooks, cleans, and takes care of the kids. She picks them up from school, takes them to school, you know, whatever she needs to do around the house. She does that because, you know, she doesn't have a job. Right. And he's constantly repeating that and repeating that. So then these doctors ask him, oh, so what do you do, sir? Well, I'm a banker. I go to work at 8 a.m. and I go and I work there eight hours and then I come home and I would like to relax and because I'm stressed and I'm on my feet. And so what does your wife do? 
Oh, she doesn't do nothing because, you know, she stays home. She doesn't have a job. She doesn't do nothing. But who wakes up in the morning? Oh, well, she wakes up in the morning at 5 a.m. She makes breakfast for the family. Then I go to work. She takes the kids to school. Then she comes home. She goes, goes to the grocery store. She pays the bills. She does the laundry. She cleans the house and everything. Because, you know, she doesn't have a job. She doesn't work. So that's why she does all that. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's the thing. People need to stop being like, oh, you don't have a job, you don't work. Well, right. what's the underlying factors of why you don't have a job? As yeah. in your case, you have fibromyalgia, you've had a brain tumor. You've had, you have other medical conditions that causes it so that you don't really get out and can work. Yeah, I have thyroid cancer. I have rheumatitis. Exactly. You have a medical list of reasons you shall not work. Yeah, but I still, my brain tells me I have to go to work. Okay, so you get, who wakes up? Uh, lunatic dead every morning. Who makes some breakfast every morning? Who makes some <laughs> supper when he comes home from work? Who does all his laundry? Me. Who cleans the house? <laughs> me. <laughs> Who makes sure that the bills are paid? Oh, me. How many jobs do you have, Mom? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Well, like yesterday, we celebrated my in-law's uh, birthday, and he requested to make him the cabbage rolls, like, yeah. you know, the way I make it, because he loves those. So I woke up in the morning, because it takes a minute, because you have to boil the cabbage, you have to make the rice, you have to roll them up, then you have to cook him. So it takes a minute. But I And I told him, I said, well, you didn't tell me if you wanted any cake, because I usually always... For all the kids, since they were little, I always told them to get, let me know what flavor dinner they would want and what kind of cake they would like. So I always make them a cake at home and make the dinner. What? So I told him, I said, well, you didn't tell me what you wanted. He's like, oh, I don't like cake. I don't I don't need that stuff. So I, I don't want it. I'm, I'm happy you made this for me. I'm so glad. And I'm like, well, I appreciate that. Because one year I actually made Kyle an ice cream cake from scratch. <laughs> that is Roy's favorite cake in mine too. Yeah. And I actually was thinking about it, uh, making it just to make it like since it's getting warmer. So I wanted to make a like a Oreo ice cream cake. Ooh. Yeah, so I wanna do that. <laughs> so when we come up there and we have a big birthday bash for me and dad, you can make me an Oreo cake. Okay, I, I, I else can do will that. Get that cake. I will be sending it in the corner. <laughs> I'll make a big pan of it. <laughs> I will be eating the Oreo cake and stabbing people. No, bye. Yeah. And one time, uh, one of the kids' friend was here, and I made her a uh, Kit Kat ice cream cake. Oh, that sounds yummy. Yeah. And Matt one year asked me to make a Reese's Pieces cake, so I made that. I don't know which one sounds better, the Reese's Pieces or the Oreo. I, I'm i I'm allergic to peanuts, so I cannot eat all of that stuff. So I'm like, I'll at least I want to try. I'll go with the so... Oreo. So me and you can sit in the corner and eat. <laughs> and when anybody tries to get it, we'll be stabbed. Walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Walk away before you get stabbed. <laughs> and then you're going to get stabbed with the fork. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I ain't bloody my fork. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no but that's why you, I told him I, I said you think I'd be crazy if you don't if I don't carry knife on me. Yeah. <laughs> With modern day society you have to. Yeah, you sometimes got all you of do. these guys that run around and they're like, Well, I bought you dinner, so you uh, you need to give me something in return. And my case, I would tell him, shove your dinner up your ass because I don't like food. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go ahead and re uh, reconfigure this. Go yeah. fuck yourself. <laughs> That's it. 
Yeah, no, that's why I told the kids all the time. I said when they were little, I said, you just tell me what you want and everything else. Even after the older ones left the house, I always told them, I said, just let me know and make sure that you tell me and you come over so I can make dinner and cake. So I always did that. And this year I told them, I said, you know, I'm always trying to rush around and make your people all your stuff and everything else. And then you all are too busy with your friends on your birthday. So peace out. Right. <laughs> Unless so, you're going to directly ask me and say you be there, then I'll do it. Right. So what does dad have plans for this weekend? Or is he not telling you? Uh, well, he, he's got whole brain of it and he drives me nuts because then he's got ideas and then he's telling me you gotta do this you gotta do that you gotta do this you gotta do that and i'm like it's my really birthday, it's, <laughs> it's already tiring even talking about it <laughs> so i'm like don't worry about it i will do everything i am a good party planner so i'll do that <laughs> Yeah, so no. uh, see, there again, you're a party planner, including everything else. So, I mean, you got oh, so yeah. many got, uh, jobs, it ain't even funny. <laughs> you just yeah. got to get your brain to start thinking a bit like that. Like, hey, this is my job. My job right. is to take care of the kids. My job is to do this. Yeah, Instead I don't look of, at it that way. Work. Yeah, I don't look at it that way. Because, see, like, it's been 19 years since I haven't worked. That's a lot of years because considering since I was a little kid, I what? consider myself, I worked even because when we grew up in Poland, we were making homemade slippers. We were doing mittens out of the sheep wool and everything else. And we were helping on a farm. So I consider myself, I worked since I was five years old. Right. Which is... And which is like, you know, that was that was our lives and everything else. So I always worked and uh, that was really hard on me when I got sick and I couldn't and and it still messes with my head. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, some people like it's like, oh, it's OK. And they are just OK because they have the like a different approach to it. And I'm like. Okay, I did everything, even when the kids were little. I went to work full time, sometimes even working 16 hours a day, and I worked seven days a week, and now I'm doing nothing because I did come home and I still did everything else. Right. So to me, it's like, well, I'm not doing nothing here, so at least I can do this. <laughs> well, you so. can entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm going to put on my resume entertainer. <laughs> Yes, you can put on your resume, entertainer, entertainer of all. Oh, now, my goodness. I, I love, uh, the, the, part of the reason that I wanted to do these talks with you is because you and I, we get along very well. Uh, right? Yes. And I really want people to get to know who Lunatic Mom is. Because everybody mm -hmm. here is Lunatic Mom, Lunatic Mom. But... And she's yelling, you know, I told the kids that the on my grave. Scenes a lot of the times. Yeah. Or and you're um, yelling at one of the kids. And right. I really want them to know who you are because you're not the person that yells constantly. You're well, a very sweet woman who oh, thank you. does everything for her babies and her husband. Yeah. Well, I told them, I said, when I die, then I wanted to have it on my tombstone. Here lies Yeller. Because they all looking at me. That I'm always yelling. But you're not. You would yell if they would smash and it. I, right. And I told them, I said, do you guys think that I wake up in the morning and I automatically say, here, I'm going to yell today about this one and this one. <laughs> and as soon as this one comes up right there, I'm yelling. No. I'm like, no, I don't wake up like that. But after I tell you one Two, two, three, three four, four, and when it gets to five, it's already above, then it's a yelling. Exactly. It, like, we give you four warnings before we start yelling. Why mm -hmm. are you not paying attention to the warnings? Mm -hmm. Because then they're like, well, why are you yelling at me? I don't understand right. what I did wrong. Yeah. 
You know what you did wrong? You didn't fucking listen the first time. You didn't hear what I was saying. When I was trying to avoid the yelling, then you didn't hear that. So now when I'm yelling, I'm actually trying to get your attention because apparently when I speak, you don't hear me. Right. And so. they're so used to dad who, you don't want to listen to me, I'll smash your shit. Oh, yeah. And that's why. And even when he raises his voice, they like, oh, he's mad. I'm like, <laughs> what the hell? Am I just a chop lever here? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> Start beating them all. Well, yeah, sometimes I feel like, yeah, I should, but, you know, and that's another thing. They laughing at me because they walk by me and they like, oh, you shrinking. And they pat me on my back. I'm like, it doesn't matter about shrinking because if I need to beat the crap out of your asses, I'm going to stand on a chair and I'm going to still beat your ass. <laughs> um, uh, wait, wait, wait. The better one. I'll knock you down to my level and I'll still whip your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yep, that's what I'm saying. So they like, oh no, we don't want mom to get mad because soon as sometimes, like when I cannot reach something and I drag the chair with me, they're like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> don't worry about it, what I'm going to do. Unless if you are, have something to worry about and scare about, then I, let, I would rather have you walk away so I don't reach your ass. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're still trying to, we're all debating on how much money it would take you to go and grab something at dad's and just smash it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, Nothing he's constantly. Like majorly important. No, because I'm like, because he's got very things like, you know, like to his self, like, you know, that he's very possessive of it. And I'm like, nope, I cannot do that because then I would not hear it. And I'm, my brain cannot comprehend that and cannot handle that. That would be shut down automatically. So if we took, when we go up there in August, if we took you to a rage room, you're going to go ahead and come smash stuff with us, right? I wouldn't mind. And every time I would pick something, like, here, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of all the yelling in my house. I'm tired of the yelling because then my throat hurts, then my head hurts, then my nerve shuts down, then I have to sit down because I can't even walk. So they overstimulate and, you to the point where you just shut down and you're just like, yes. you and got 2.5 seconds to get the fuck away from me before I beat that's, your ass. That's how. And then the, David always says, like, you know, that it takes eight minutes for the cops to show up here. And in the eight minutes, you better make sure you run. <laughs> that I don't get to you first. Oh, no, no, no. It, it will take eight minutes to get here. But as you're yeah. running, my ass is going to get on in a car and chase you down and beat you. And it's going to take them another yep. eight minutes to get to, there. To show up there. Yeah. <laughs> no, because they like always oh, like, you know, when you get mad, we don't know what you're going to do. What you're going to grab. What you're going to throw. I'm like. Well, then I guess you better retract yourself, rewind it, however you want to do it, and then think about it. Is it worth it to do this and then get this, or is it just worth it to walk away? <laughs> exactly. Give me a second. I got to run yeah. the potty. I'll be right back. We were talking about all the joys of being a mother and whooping the children's asses. <laughs> Yeah, like yesterday we were talking about it <clears throat> because, like, you know, our daughter, is, she's a teacher and everything else. And I told them, I said, you guys don't understand how hard is it to be a teacher these days to discipline any kids or anything because there is none. There is, doesn't exist anymore because they took that away from teachers to be able to show the difference, what is right, what is wrong, and how you have to pay for your consequences. And then they took away the power of the parents to discipline their children because then you're abusing them. And right. I'm like, so now look at him. They're Who's all... running it? The kids run everything. Yeah. And then, then on the other hand, it's like, oh, well, yeah, they are doing this. They are doing that. Well, because if you would have let us to whip their ass instead of putting us in jail that, you know, we're abusing the kids, then maybe they wouldn't be doing that. 
But there's a difference between abusing your child and, and discipline. discipline. Yep. And there is. That's where there is, like, yes, make abuse a, a, illegal. Like, you should not, your kids should not go to school black and blue or with random broken right. bones because you got mad. Yes. That Which is, is, they should recognize it, how to, how to categorize what is discipline and what is abuse. Exactly. But now, as soon as they see, because like Lawrence, when he was little, he was like in a third grade. Hold on. He's the one that like literally makes sure that everything's taken care of in the house. Just good. He's the you. <laughs> Only difference is, is he gets paid for it. Oh, okay. Well, I get my social security. Mm. <laughs> no, he actually gets paid. Oh, okay. company Because we're not married. Okay, so they paid him that he helps you out. Right. And we oh, sleep okay. in two different rooms, so. Oh, okay. That's, that's where that comes in. Oh, okay. So he, he gets to let he gets paid to clean my room, clean the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Um Well that it helps you out. Yeah. Yeah, that does. helps you out. Which that reminds me after we're done with this pre record, I gotta let him know about the bank. About okay. The bank? <laughs> I'll let you know what remember things, so it's like frustrating and I had to go to the bank and tell them that I don't know what I did with my card, so it's lost. And I'm not gonna take chances that in case if I did lose it somewhere that I dropped it, you know, at the store or gas station or something, I'm not gonna take chances that I'm not gonna report it. So now the bank is uh send that they said that the card is coming five to seven business day. Yeah. And my husband's like how are we going to go over the weekend? I'm like, well, we're going to go to the bank the old fashioned and take the moolah out. <laughs> right. Like I have, we have two cards for um my account because of the simple fact Froggy loses everything. And my card stays in the car. Yeah, I just. In a like, special area, it stays in the car. And then. His card stays in his wallet. Right. But a lot of times I'll use Apple phone or my Apple pay. And okay. just pay through there. But now like I can shut off my credit card however I need to. Yeah. See, like I don't trust these things. Like, you know, this Apple yeah. pay or this scan thing. I really don't trust this because we have been hacked before in a bank that I was like sitting in front of the computer like the way we do now. And I was trying to make sure that when I pay the bills, I wanted to set it up like, you know what I can do. And I logged into my account and I'm watching the money to be taken out and uh, whatever the, they were putting the ma little messages. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Here goes 500. Here's go a thousand. Here's go 200. And I'm like, what am I going to, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Yep. Took call, all of it. Call the bank. Call the I bank. did. No, I did that. And then on top of it, because like as soon as I was watching it to be done, I was on the phone with the bank and she's going for so, so Oh, I need to verify your account. I need to verify. I'm telling you, there's money missing out of my account while I'm watching it. Can you please shut it down? Oh, I have to make sure that it's you calling. So take it any slower. Right. Let them steal the rest of my money. Yeah. So they did. And then, then they like, oh, we have to investigate if you didn't authorize these transactions. I'm like, how would I freaking authorize and then call your ass? Because there are people that do that. I, and, and I understand that, but that's what I'm saying. But that's why, see, like these kind of people, because they're trying to basically steal and get free money for nothing they do that and then honest people that they don't want to do nothing i just want to live my life and pay my bills and don't touch my money because that's what i only have to live off right and exactly. and it's like and then you you being questioned because you're reporting something you're being questioned oh is that really you no 
It's not. It's the freaking as dumb as they're taking my money. So I just got so angry. And my husband's like, oh, slow down, slow down, slow down. And I'm like, well, you talk to these people because I'm already aggravated. I said, look, tell them that we're watching the bank money going. Right. So finally they, they stopped it, but they already took quite a bit. Exactly, and hopefully you got that money back. Not all of it, because they said some of the smaller transactions that they were like $50, $100, $150. So they like, oh, these smaller transactions, so we're not sure if you authorized those. They only gave the big amounts. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That's bullshit. Yeah, then, and we had to go and change all the stuff and everything else. And change email, change all that and everything. So that that was a chaos because then, like whatever you have set up, that is automatic payments and everything else. Yeah. Now nothing got paid, and everybody's calling, everybody's sending email, everybody's sending you know mail. Oh, you did that? You you missed it? You missed? It. No shit, Sherlock. They took my freaking money. Right. So, At that point in time, you're just like, this yeah, is what's so, going on. Yeah, that's Stop why it's it. just so aggravating. But, you know, you have to, like, I guess we live in this technology shit that I don't like to, like, the kids, like, oh, I have this Apple Pay, and I just touch my phone to that thing. I'm like, nope, I don't want nobody touching my phone, or whatever it's in there, however it is in there, because right. there's hackers that they can do whatever they can, can do. They can get into your phone. They can <clears throat> get into the bank. All your information, everything. And... I was actually like one time See, watching and that's with my the friend. Thing about uh, being on my iPhone, it has no service. So the only way they're gonna hack it is if they're on my uh, mobile hotspot because that's what I use for it. I don't use anything okay. else. Yeah. Well, me and my friend were watching actually like the documentary <clears throat> that the person was actually speaking that he got hacked. And he was completely erased that he was dead. His social security was deactivated. Everything. They erased him out of life. Then how are you going to prove it that it's you? Right. So he had to go through all kind of shit and everything else to prove that that it's him, that it's all that showing like a physical thing, like, you know, that they give you, like, you know, sometimes you have, for whatever reason that they do fingerprinting or something. So, so that was like all done, but everything else, it was, he was completely erased. Right. Give me they had to issue seconds. him completely, give him new social security. Okay. I just seen that one of the kids, like not kids, but I don't even know if they know him, but from our area, from the next town, from Morris, the kid is 28 years old and just died on March 2nd. How? And they didn't say nothing. They just like, you know, reported it that he passed away. Yeah. Yeah. That's always sad when it's a young kid. It is. <laughs> it's so sad. That's why I was asking Kyle. I said, do you, did you know this kid? Because... They have this, uh, it's a young person that opened up a barber shop that, yeah. you know, for then. So they all go in there and I guess he was working there. So I was yeah. like, maybe he knew yeah. him, but he said, no, he didn't know him. Well, rest in peace to the young man yeah. who passed away. It's there's, so sad. There's a lot. I've noticed nowadays, there's a lot of people that are very, hmm, how do you put it? Very. Uh, okay. So like, instead of driving decently, it's all about speed. Mm -hmm. The faster they go, the harder. You know? Yes. It's like, 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 what do you have to prove to who or what, you know, like, how is that helping in anyone? Because then it's like, things happen. Like the other day they were showing on the news that, on a highway, they had a highway shut down for two and a half hours because somebody was shooting people driving. What the and I'm like, fuck? yeah, on the border of Indiana and Illinois. And they had it shut down. And I'm like, how is it? What is the accomplishment that you're looking for? Like, what is this? 
like how is it that it's a fun or how is this that it's going to benefit you and in any way that you're going to take somebody's life and then what right even, so it's even just if so you sad. Don't take someone's life, you're still going to end up in prison. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. Murder, which is even worse. Like you failed at <laughs> you failed at the mission in hand. Right, but that's why because there was like so many accidents because like I said, when they shooting these freaking ass people, that and one car gets hit, maybe not the person got hit, but if the car then they get swerved because you know and that's the speed because the highway everybody goes at least 80 miles an hour so now there is a bunch of cars that is piled up right and in that situation some people might die so it's just so stressful that's why i'm like and i always tell my husband i said i hate to drive on a highway because i'm scared of these people how they drive and i rather go two hours earlier somewhere to get and i'm gonna go my way so i can make it there exactly. instead of just going and be petrified am i gonna make it right all right so we're gonna stop this here because the braxis just called i think his his they're finally home okay um, so we're gonna end this here and then we will pick up next week okay i know you guys normally we do this on sundays so. right right no it, it's fine but like i said and if you guys want me to like you know on a sunday stuff or whatever 